ਅਨੁਰੂਪ ਗੁਰੂ ਪਿਆਰੀ ਸਾਧ ਸੰਗਤ ਜੀ ਕੱਜ ਕੇ ਫਤਿਹ ਬਲਾਉਣੀ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸੋ ਯੂ ਕਰ ਬੈਕ 20 ਮਿੰਟਸ ਟੂ ਡਿਸਕਸ ਬਾਬਾ ਬੁੱਢਾ ਜੀ ਐਂਡ ਪਰ ਦਿ ਫਰਸਟ ਪਲੇਸ ਟੂ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਵਿਦ ਇਸ ਵਾਈ ਵੀ ਡਿਸਾਈਡਡ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਦਿਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਟੁਡੇ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਈ ਵੀ ਡਿਸਾਈਡਡ ਟੂ ਸੈਲੀਬ੍ਰੇਟ ਦਿ ਲਾਈਫ ਆਫ ਬਾਬਾ ਬੁੱਢਾ ਜੀ ਇਨ ਵੈਰੀਅਸ ਕੈਂਪਸ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਡਨ ਬ੍ਰੇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮਸ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਡਨ ਵੀ ਟਾਕਡ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਬਿਲਡਿੰਗ ਅ ਰਿਲੇਸ਼ਨਸ਼ਿਪ ਵਿਦ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ spent a lot of time talking about what maraj means to us and what we mean to guru sahib and how we can develop that relationship and where the relationship can take us if we look in our history there's loads of role there's roles of loads of role models plenty of examples that we can use to evidence what that relationship can mean and where it can take you and there's probably no better role model than baba buddha ji when it comes to showing what the relationship between a sikh and the guru can be like baba buddha ji as you've already heard and we're going to do a few sakya from baba ji's life did save our six of the guru sabs and that's amazing six of the 10 guru sabs that were in human form baba ji did their seva so i probably wouldn't be too far off the mark to say that there's probably no other guru sikh like baba buddha ji and if there's ever any doubt of a guru sikh becoming one of the guru and then becoming one of the guru there should be no doubt that that was baba buddha ji who achieved that so baba buddha ji he lived to the age of about 125 Now, for a lot of people they won't believe that but if you look at baba buddha ji when they met guru nanak dev ji through to when they left this physical world at the times of the six guru their ages there the numbers match up baba buddha ji actually met guru nanak dev ji maharaj when they were just 12 years old they were a young boy farming doing the work and they heard the kirtan from guru nanak dev ji pai mardana ji and when they heard the kirtan they felt a pull they felt a catch and what they said was they went home to get some milk from their mother they thought these are men of god and i've got to give them something so they went and they took the milk to guru nanak dev ji maharaj and they did the seva and guru nanak dev ji maharaj says what are you doing here such a young boy what's what's made you come here why are you interested he says maharaj i heard the kirtan i can clearly see you're a holy man you're a saint i've heard the kirtan and i want to hear more i want to learn tell me something about god and again guru nanak dev ji maharaj said to him because you're just a young boy how old are you said i'm 12 years old what do you do i'm a farmer So, so what does a 12 year old know about god why is a 12 year old asking questions about god and baba buddha ji said tell me about god because death's around the corner death could strike me at any second death could strike me at any minute in my life and with death being so close by i haven't got the time to not think about god i've got to think about god now and yet if we look at our lives after we think later next year when i'm 20 when i'm 30 when i'm 40 when i'm 50 i'll learn about god I'll get into Sikhi. I'll take my Amrit next year, year after. And yet we have Baba Buddha Ji, whose name is Baba Buddha Ji at that time. 12 years old saying, I could die the next minute. Teach me about God now. I haven't got time to waste. And when Gurnan Dev Ji Maharaj heard this girl, he says, you talk like a Siyana. And he gave him the name Buddha. Not only that, Maharaj was so pleased with Baba Buddha Ji at 12 years old. He actually hugged him. And when he hugged him, that was it. That was it. All the Kerpa, that Baba Buddha Ji needed as a Sikh was there, Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. Now for many of us, we talk about wanting to get close to Maharaj, we talk about wanting to get the Darshan of Maharaj, we talk about wanting to be able to see Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj for who they truly are. Imagine Baba Buddha Ji actually being taken to the arms of Guru Nanak Dev Ji and held at the age of just 12. Imagine the Kirpa on them at that age. And when this happened, they went home to their parents and said, I'm going. They said, I'm not going to stay with you anymore, I'm going with Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. And they actually left their home and went to Kirtarpur Sahib with Maharaj. and the ranger stay there the ranger sit there that she did seva so she did farming they helped build the town they did seva for the sangat they did seva for guru nanak dev ji maharaj they met they met pai lena ji and pai lena ji got there and they did this seva and they got the kirpa guru maharaj and throughout this time they really did the kirtan they doing the nitram that relationship with maharaj is growing more and more day by day and already they're being respected because maharaj already given the name of buddha which is yana as tom went on maharaj as kenny rinji singh ji was saying was testing the guru six and time came when baba buddha ji was also being tested and a conversation took place where maharaj started actually started not only telling the sikhs to leave him go home he actually beating them with his stick said tell jo leave what do you want from me and pai lena ji remained the most steadfast but pai buddha ji was baba buddha ji was also there and again baba buddha ji was blessed again by guru nanak dev ji maharaj at this point for refusing to leave him and he was hugged again embraced by maharaj and he's given a blessing and this blessing became very important in future in the future years what guru nanak dev ji maharaj said to baba buddha ji was that from today onwards you and i will never be separate wherever i am you'll know 
So I will never be hidden from you, Buddha. That was a blessing of Baba Buddha Ji got, that the Guru will never be hidden from you. No matter where I am, no matter what form I'm in, you will always know me. And this is the blessing that Baba Buddha Ji got of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. The Seva continued and when the time came for a Gurgaddi to be given from Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj to Pai Lena Ji, we become Guru Angad Dev Ji Maharaj. The actual Seva was done by Baba Buddha Ji. So the Muryada was that it was Panji a coconut, and this used to be a that used to be applied to the head of the next Guru. And Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj actually made Baba Buddha Ji do that Seva. And after that seva was done, the first Sikh, the first person to mother take to the second Guru Zavsi, Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj themselves, after Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj is Baba Buddha Ji. But they actually had this Mahan Seva, this massive Seva of actually doing the transfer of the Guru Gaddi from Guru Nanak Dev Ji to Guru Angad Dev Ji. So when Guru Angad Dev Ji becomes a Guru, Baba Buddha Ji is there again. And there was a time when Guru Angad Dev Ji Maharaj left the Sangat and went and stayed in a house. And his my Parai's house, his Bibi's house. And Maharaj, Guru Angad Dev Ji Maharaj told the Bibi, he says, whatever happens, whoever comes looking, don't tell them that I'm here. You are not to tell anybody that I'm in this house. And this Mata, this Mai, being a Sikh of the second Guru, said, Satabhachan, no matter who comes, no matter what they say, I won't tell them that you're here. Now, the Sangat are looking for Guru Angad Dev Ji Maharaj. Obviously, they've just, Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj just left this earth in terms of the physical form. And they want to attach to the second Guru, get up there, get their learning, get their Sikhya from the second Guru, but they can't find him. And they asked Baba Buddha Ji because he's one of the most Siyanai Guru Sikhs around, one of the most elderly Guru Sikhs, one of the most esteemed Guru Sikhs. And this blessing that Guru Nanak Dev Ji had given Baba Buddha Ji was put to use and Baba Ji said, I know where they are. We've got to go to Khadur Sahib. So the Sangat followed Baba Buddha Ji to Khadur Sahib and they went to this house and they went to the Bibi said, Maharaj is inside. And she just said, I can't tell you. And Baba Buddha Ji said, I know he's here. And again, the Bibi said, how do you know? Maharaj said, look at the glow on your face. Look at the radiance, look at the happiness that I can feel from you. This kind of anand, this kind of ecstasy that you're experiencing right now, Bibi, this is only possible when the Guru's there. And Guru Angad Dev Ji Maharaj never came out. So to bring Maharaj out, what Baba Buddha Ji did, he got the Sangat, sat down, sat in Kirtan. Now, when we talk about our relationship with Maharaj, when we want to bring Maharaj to us, if we want to bring Maharaj, if we want to get close to Maharaj, Maharaj has given us all the clues we need, it's Kirtan. Guru Angad Dev Ji Maharaj is hiding himself from the Sangat. What brought Guru Angad Dev Ji Maharaj out was Kirtan. When the Sikhs are singing Kirtan, Guru Angad Dev Ji himself came out of the house. And when he and Baba Buddha Ji met again, Baba Buddha Ji bowed to Guru Angad Dev Ji Maharaj in respect. And he did Bainti to Guru Angad Dev Ji Maharaj, bless me, teach me about Sikhi. And Guru Angad Dev Ji Maharaj says, what can I teach you? You who have done Seva Guru Nanak Dev Ji, you know it all anyway, what can I possibly teach you? And sometimes we share that to each other. You're such a great Guru Sikh, what can I teach you? And sometimes we use these words too easily, too freely. Sometimes we mean them well, but sometimes we use them all day. Just because they're nice things to say. But in this instance, Guru Angad Dev Ji meant, meant it. He was, what can I teach you, Baba Buddha Ji? You who were loved, you who were kept close by Guru Nanak Dev Ji themselves. Baba Ji then stayed at Kadur Sahib and continued with the Seva, looking after the Sangat, getting involved in the Langar, getting involved in anything that Guru Angad Dev Ji said to him. Whatever Guru Angad Dev Ji said, Baba Buddha Ji did. No questions asked. And when it came for the Gurgaddi to go on to the third Guru, again, Baba Buddha Ji was given that seva. So not only did he do the seva of the Gurgaddi, the Guruship going from the first to the second Guru, he did it again from the second to the third. And again, the third Guru occasion came and we're rushing through the history because there's just so much of it. But it's amazing how much history is covered by Baba Buddha Ji's life. But there's a time when the third Guru was sitting on the Manji Sahib, as Maharaj sitting here today. And Datuji, who was from the Guru's family, who had irka in his mind, he had doubt in his mind, he had hankar in his mind, that the Guru Gaddi should have come to me. I'm in the Guru's family. And what he actually did, he came to Guru Amar Das Ji Maharaj and actually kicked Guru Amar Das Ji Maharaj while they were on the Manji. And Guru, Guru Amar Das Ji Maharaj, sorry, Guru Amar Das Ji Maharaj, rather than get angry, he stood up and he said, You're a young man, I'm old, my bones are really hard, I'm sorry if I hurt your foot. So look at the compassion of Guru Amar Das Ji Maharaj. He's the Guru, he's get, he gets kicked off the Imanji and he apologizes for his bones being hard. And that too tells Guru, Guru, Guru Sahib, you've got till nightfall to leave. After nightfall comes, I don't want to see you here. Guru Amar Das Ji goes, Tika. So Guru Amar Das Ji in the middle of the night gets on his horse and goes. And they go to Basarke, which is where they were from, a pender they were from, which is near Amritsar. In the morning, the Sangat come again and they're looking for the TJ Guru. They can't find him anyway. So again, they go to Baba Buddha Ji. They go, Baba Ji, where is the Guru Sahib? We can't find them anyway. 
And again, Baba Buddha Ji had that blessing of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, and they went straight to Basra Kipend. This time it was different. This time there wasn't someone at the gate saying, I can't tell you the Guru is here. Guru Amar Dasya actually written a sign on the wall, on the door, saying, Whoever comes through this door is no longer a Sikh. If you come through this door, you're not my Sikh. So the Sangat sitting there thinking, Han ki kariye, what can we do now? The TJ Guru, Guru Amar Das Maharaj said, Whoever comes through this door is no longer my Sikh. So how can we see the Guru? Guru Sahib won't come out and we're not allowed in. But Baba Buddha Ji, he was so in love with Guru Sahib, there was always going to be a way. There's nothing that was going to stop him from seeing his Guru. So the first thing Baba Buddha Ji did was Matatek, did Prakarma around this house, then went to the back wall, so door was in the front of the house, he went to the back wall and he knocked a hole through the back wall. He smashed a hole in the back wall and he climbed through the hole. And inside Guru Amar Das Maharaj is sitting there cross-legged doing the Bhakti. When Maharaj opened their eyes and saw Baba Buddha Ji, they said, what are you doing here? He said, Maharaj, come to get your darshan. Maharaj says, I told you, there's a sign on the door, he said, which you're not my Sikh now. Baba Buddha Ji said, Maharaj, Maharaj knew what was going on, but again, this is just the, the game between the Guru and the Sikh. Baba Ji said, Maharaj, you said, no, come through the door. I didn't come through the door, I came through the wall. And if you go there now, you can still see that hole in that wall. Some sort of sub. And Sengza Apyar say that if you want to cut your Jirasi Lakajun, this circle of life and death of 8.4 million lives, you climb through that hole and do your job yourself. Because this is Baba Buddha Ji cutting his Jirasi Lakajun now. By climbing through that hole, no matter what it took, even if the Guru made that sign, if you go through this door, you're no longer my Sikh. Baba Buddha Ji wanted to see his Guru. So even if he had to knock down walls, he wouldn't see his Guru. <coughs> so again, when we talk about our relationship with Guru Sahib, what are we willing to do? How, much, how far are we willing to go to become with the Guru, to become Sikhs of the Guru, to see Guru Sahib Darshan, to form that bond of love? How far are we willing to go? What can we do? At the first obstacle, do we just say, that's it, I can't see Guru Sahib? Though Sikh is too hard, or my family getting in the way, my family won't let me keep my case, they're not happy that I take Amrit, they're worried about I might not be able to get married. Are these the things that are going through our minds when we have our relationship with Maharaj? Remember, Baba Buddha Ji had a sign which says, You come through this door, you are no longer my Sikh. So Guru, Guru Amr Das Ji Maharaj and Baba Buddha Ji they went to Goindwal Sab. And Goindwal Sab, they went there, and again, Baba Buddha Ji stayed there. And if you go there now, there's something called Bowli Sab which is a well. And in this well, there's 84 steps which lead down to this well. And Guru Amar Das Ji Maharaj built this well for the Sangat for Pani because the local kind of rich men were stopping the Pani from the poor. The poor people couldn't get any Pani. So Guru Amar Das Ji Maharaj built this well. And this well is still there now, as I said, Bowli Sab. The first spade, you know you talk about kind of foundation stones or breaking the earth. You normally have a respected person or a Mori or a leader or something who does that first thing, you know, it's a very symbolic thing. The person to break the earth there was Baba Buddha Ji. So again, all these things that are in our history, that are in our Tarama, Baba Buddha Ji had a hand in them. So Bauli Sahib, Baba Buddha Ji first broke the earth and then was one of the key Sevadas when it came to actually digging that well. And if you look at Baba Buddha Ji Seva, and we'll talk about this in a few minutes, they did Hatti Seva. They were the, the most respected Gursik, but they weren't the kind of Gursik that was respected and therefore sat there and watched over everyone else and told everyone else what to do. They're the type of respected Gursik that when there was any seva to be done, they're in the mix. So when you're digging a well, what happens? Digging a well means you've got to dig up mitti, you put it in a basket and you carry it on your head because it's heavy to somewhere else. And the mitti is filled with pani, which means mud dripping all over your body and your face and your dari. This is Baba Buddha Ji carrying this. Baba Buddha Ji who gave, he did the seva of giving the Guru Gaddi to Guru Angad Dev Ji. He did the seva of giving the Guru Gaddi to Guru Amar Das Ji. Here he is carrying baskets full of mud. But again he served the third Guru in this way. The time came for the fourth Guru. By Jetta Ji became Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj. For to become the Guru. And surprise, surprise again is Baba Buddha Ji who did that Guru Gaddi seva. From Guru Amar Das Ji to Guru Ram Das Ji. And once again, after Guru Amar Das Ji Matatek to the fourth Guru is, Guru, is Baba Buddha Ji to be the first Sikh to Matatek to Guru Ram Das Ji. So this story goes on. With Guru Ram Das Ji, what did Baba Buddha Ji do? With Guru Ram Das Ji, Baba Buddha Ji again was involved in digging the Sarovar that we do at Harmandar Sahib. So when you go there and you have Ishnana at Harmandar Sahib Sarovar, that Sarovar again was dug by the hands of Baba Buddha Ji and the Gursikhs. The Prakarma that you walk around, those bricks, the original bricks were laid, but not only laid, were cooked, baked by Baba Buddha Ji's hands and then laid out by again those hands. 
Baba Buddha Ji's seva wasn't just sitting in a room or looking after Guru Sikhs. He was Hathi seva. Those hands were muddy. Those hands were burnt by the heat. That body was drenched in sweat serving the Guru. Not from the back seat, but from the front line. Again, during Guru Ram Das's time, Baba Buddha, Baba Buddha Ji's respect was so high. Again, not doing the Sakhi and Gyanir Ranjit Singh didn't do it either because of time. But there was a time when Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj, or Arjun at the time, was in Lahore. And he'd been there for a good long while. And again, if you want to hear the story, read about the Shaud Hazare and the letters that Guru Arjun Dev Ji sent Guru Ram Das Ji. Some of the most beautiful letters you're ever going to read. Letters of love, Shaud Hazare. But when it, when it came to bring Guru Arjun Dev Ji back, it was Baba Buddha Ji that was sent as again the most respected Gursik. And they said that when Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj saw Baba Buddha Ji, he was so happy. His letters of love were for his Guru, for his father, Guru Ram Das Ji. But when he saw that his father had sent Baba Buddha Ji to fetch him, it was again Ananda. So it carries on. When the Guru Gaddi went from Guru Ram Das Ji Maharaj to Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj, again, it's Baba Buddha Ji who did that seva. And again, Baba Buddha Ji was involved in constructing Sri Harmandar Sahib. So we have Baba Ji involved in building up Kartarpur Sahib. We have Baba Ji involved in building up Khadur Sahib. Baba Ji involved in building up Govindwal Sahib, Bauli Sahib. Baba Ji involved in building the Sarovar, the Parkarma, Sri Harmandar Sahib. And while I'm here, I'm also finish off. Baba Ji was also the first alongside Pai Gurdas Ji and the Sheme Guru, Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji Maharaj, to build the Kal Tak Sahib as well. So just about every single major and significant Guru Tam, the first six Guru's lives, Baba Buddha Ji was involved in constructing that, or digging it. During Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj's times, Baba Buddha Ji often had to step in because of disputes. So Prithvi was causing trouble at times. And there was a time when Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj didn't have longer for days and days. Again, Guru Baba Buddha Ji resolved that. The key story, the main one that we hear during the fifth Guru's times when it came to Baba Buddha Ji was when people were making remarks saying the fifth Guru is not going to have any children. The fifth Guru can't have a child. And Mata Ganga Ji, who was the wife of the fifth Guru, they said, what can we do? People are doing many. Now, especially for the Bibiya, some of you who are perhaps married and are in a position where child, children aren't in your kind of garment, let's say, or you're finding it hard for children, you know how difficult it is when people are doing those kind of gallah. So Mata Ganga Ji came to Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj and said, but these are the gallah, what do we do? And Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj says, we got to do Ardas. Who should we get to do Ardas? Let's get Baba Buddha Ji. There's no better person than Baba Buddha Ji to do this Ardas for a child. And Mata Ganga Ji first went to see Baba Buddha Ji. And Baba Buddha Ji had been had, were at Bair Sahib now. And at Bair Sahib was a plot of land that they had received. And here they were farming again because they used to grow crops to use the langar. So again, they weren't just sitting in a room doing the pagati. They're doing the pagati in the field, again, covered in mud, doing seva, so the Sangat Karav De Langar. And this was the highest and most respected Gursik that Guru Arjun Dev Ji could think of to do Das so that they could have a child. And when Mata Ganga Ji went, Baba Buddha Ji was in this field, again, covered in mud, knee deep in Gara. And when Mata Ganga Ji went the first time, she went with loads of friends. She went to loads of sevaks, and they went in a chariot, dressed really smartly. And Baba Buddha Ji sent them back. Said, this isn't how it's done. And when they came back to Guru, Angar, to Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj and told them what happened, Maharaj says, when you go to beg, when you go to ask, you go with humility in your heart. You go with humility in your heart. And Mata Ganga Ji came again with just one person with them. They came with just a prashadda and, some, and a ganda and onion. And when they came this time, again they did their das. And Baba Buddha Ji said, of course you will have a child. You will have a child who will be such a great child. And he took the onion in his hand and he smashed it with his fist. So you know the same way they have smashed this onion with my fist. Your son will smash the head of tyrants in the same way. He will rip their heads off. He will bring justice to this land. Have no fear that you will not have a child. Your child will be one of the greatest men to walk this earth. And when we then compare that with what we do in our lives. And we want to do Ardas to Maharaj. And we go to beg of Maharaj. How much humility do we come with? I'll give you an example, a real example that many of us will be able to relate to weddings. And we come to the Godra Sahib for Anand Karaj. We come to beg of Maharaj. Okay, Maharaj bless us with Anand Karaj. Bless us so as a husband and wife we can live our lives in the future. Maharaj bless us with peace and harmony in our house. Maharaj bless us with this union. But we don't come in humility. 
We don't come in humility. I was at a wedding just last week, and I know it happens at every wedding, so this isn't a direct attack on anybody. But even during the Lama, there was noise. And the guy that was trying to control the Sangat, you couldn't even hear him. And he had to be Jakare, shouted and stuff, just the Sangat would actually listen to the Lama the part. This is where we're getting to. We want to do Adasa from Guru Sahib. We want Guru Sahib's blessings, but we don't want to listen to what they've got to say. We come here and we drown out the voice of Gurbani. If that happens, like Mata Gangaji will be sent back. We have to come in humility to the Guru's house. If we come as beggars, we've got to be like beggars. If you were walking down the street and you saw a beggar in a Hugo Boss suit with a Rolex watch and a, and a box in front of him saying, please, money, please, you're not going to give him anything. He's got, he's got everything he needs. He loader. Similarly, if we come here with ego, we've got all this flashy stuff, I've got everything in the world. That's not how it works in the Guru's house. We've got to come with humility. So Guru, Baba Buddha Ji blessed Mata Ganga Ji and Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj with this child. And when this child was finally born, again, Baba, Baba Buddha Ji is at Bair Sab because they spend a lot of time there. And again, you can go there, you can find out where they did the Bhakti, look at where they did the Seva. Still there today. And from there, they have, they've received a message that the Guru, Guru Arjun Dev Ji, the fifth Guru, has actually had a child. It's a baby boy. Please come. So Baba Buddha Ji is over the moon. Because don't forget, at this age and this time, even Guru Arjun Dev Ji would have grown up around Baba Buddha Ji. Baba Ji would have seen them growing from a young child to a man, to a Guru. So he's obviously over the moon that Guru Arjun Dev Ji had a child. He came running to Harmandar Sahib. And Baba Ji was given Shemi Pacha. Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj actually took the child, passed it to Baba Buddha Ji and said, it was your Das that brought them here. Now you are the one to name them. So Shemi Pacha was not only born off the result of the Ardas of Baba Buddha Ji, he's also named by Baba, Baba Buddha Ji, so, named Hargobind. Look at the Kerpa on one Gursik. This is the PR that Maharaj has for his Sikhs, and this is where the relationship with Maharaj can take a Gursik. From a 12 year old child bringing milk for Guru Nanak Dev Ji to a place where he not only doing Ardas for the children of Maharaj, but naming them as well. And the Kerpa didn't stop there. When Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj is writing Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj's first roop and we celebrate the Pela Prakash here as well. During that time, they said to Baba Buddha Ji that while I'm doing this, while I'm writing Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj's roop, you need to sit in Harmandar Sahib and teach the Sikh Sangat. So when the Sangat come to learn about Sikhi, when the Sangat come to learn about Gurbani, I want you to sit in Harmandar Sahib and teach them. So the Harmandar Sahib where Guru Maharaj themselves used to sit and teach the Sangat, they put Baba Buddha Ji there for a whole year to teach the Sangat. When it came for Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj to be finally Prakash, Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj's roop was ready. At the time of Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj, Maharaj said to Baba Buddha Ji, again, this is your seva. You will carry Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj into Harmandar Sahib. And again, Baba Buddha Ji said, no. He goes, how can I do that? You're the Guru. I'm just a Nimana Sikh. I'm just a lowly Sikh. I've got no gun. There's no qualities in me which give me that seva. I can't do it. Baba Buddha Ji said, Guru Arjan Dev Ji said, it's your seva. He says, you will carry Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj's roop and I will do Chorsa behind you. So when we talk about Pella Prakash, the first time Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj was Prakash on this planet, Baba Buddha Ji not only carried Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj into Harmandar Sahib, he was then told to sit there and actually take the first Hukam Nama from Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj as well, was taken by Baba Buddha Ji. I said, look at this Guru Sikh's life. Look at his life and look at our own life. Look at this relationship with Maharaj that Baba Buddha Ji built. How did he build it? By Piyar and by Seva. The first Hukam Nama was taken by Baba Buddha Ji. The first Jabji Sahib read after that was read by Baba Buddha Ji. The first Granthi Sahib, the first person to do duty in say Harmandar Sahib was Baba Buddha Ji. When Baba Buddha Ji went back to Bera Sahib to do more Seva for the Sangat, when Guru Hargobin Sahib Ji Maharaj got to a certain age and it's time for them to learn Vidya, to learn about Sikhi, to learn about the world, to learn about horse riding, learn about weaponry, all the different types of skills. Again, Baba Buddha Ji was called and again, Baba Buddha Ji said, how can I teach them anything? I'm just a farmer. He goes, look at my hands, covered in dirt. Look at my clothes, I'm filthy. I have no skills, I have no knowledge. And Guru Arjun Dev Ji said a great thing and Gani Pindrapal said this in his Gatha. I thought it was a beautiful line. He goes, if you can't teach him anything else, he goes, teach him about that love that you had for Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Teach him about that love that made Guru Nanak Dev Ji call you a Buddha. Just teach him that. 
teach him that sikhi teach him that pyar and baba buddha ji accepted the seva and they went on to teach guru har gobind sahib ji maharaj everything you can imagine every skill every science every language and again gyani ji in the katha said a very beautiful thing he said as an old man now as baba buddha ji was he would have sat there and he would have done santhya with guru har gobind sahib ji maharaj taught the shame paach or taught the six guru how to read gurbani and he says a beautiful example because you can imagine the voice the deep voice of baba buddha ji saying ek oankar and the young high pitch voice of the six guru saying ek oankar back look at the relationship of the guru and his sik from a 12 year old boy to now teaching the son of the guru how to read gurbani and when the time came for the fifth guru to be shaheed again it was baba buddha ji that read the final par, uh, bani after the shaheedi is baba buddha ji who put both talwara on guru har gobind sahib ji maharaj is baba buddha ji that tied the dastar this is all baba buddha ji baba buddha ji as i said earlier was there creating a kal tak sahib this is the guru sikh this is guru makadi nishaniya this is the pyar that they had for the guru and the guru had for them and this is the same guru har gobind sahib ji maharaj that was placed in their hands when they were born and now baba buddha ji alight some is put two karpana on them tying the dastar on them making them the guru and there are so many sakhiya and i guess one of the key ones cuz i'm probably oh, i'm running over time was the pyar between the six guru and baba buddha ji was again beyond and there's one sakhi which i heard recently where again at bair sahib baba ji would walk to harmandir sahib to do the darshan of guru sahib an old man would walk and baba buddha ji's age was easily over 100 at this point easily over 100 110 years old walking stick big wooden walking stick walking to see the guru and guru har gobind sahib ji maharaj did that did bent to him say listen will you do something for me sat bachan tell me what you would like me to do shame pass said i don't like it when you walk here i will give you my palki you know how har mandir sahib they have um, guru granth sahib ji maharaj comes out they have a palki sahib that maharaj carried in they offered that to baba buddha ji and what they said is baba buddha ji want you to come in that palki so let the sikhs carry you in this palki and baba buddha ji said actually for guru sikh is better to walk to see the guru in humility and maharaj says is my hukum my command to you is you need to come carry in this palki so baba buddha ji man gets said okay one day as they climbed in this palki and they were walking they had this veil on the side and unbeknown to them Guru Bhai Nanak Nibadi asked Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji Maharaj came and he said to one of the Sikhs over there Guru Sikha move over let me carry this so it's a Sikh guru the guru of the Sikhs saying to one of his Sikhs move over let me carry Baba Buddha Ji on my shoulder this is the respect they had for the Baba Buddha Ji as soon as Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji Maharaj put the palki on the shoulder a voice came out said stop stop moving stop walking right now says put the palki down now or i jump out baba buddha ji said if he, anybody moves a single another step i'm jumping out this palki right now i'm an old man but i will jump out this palki when they put the palki down baba buddha ji jumped outside he grabbed the feet of the sikh guru he goes bentia please don't do that he goes i'm your sikh you're my guru please don't do that fella guru har gobind sahib ji's feet and this is the sixth guru that he held in his hand this is sixth guru that he did ardasa for the sixth guru that he named the sixth guru that he taught vidya to this is sixth guru that taught, learned how to walk from him how to talk from him how to read gurbani from him and his baba buddha ji holding his feet saying you are my guru am your sikh please don't do that this is the pyar between a sikh and his guru and when the final time came for baba buddha ji to leave again as a brahmgani there was no doubt they knew that and they sent a message from um ramadas which is where they were to the sikh guru ke benti ya ke please give me a darshan my time's coming to an end 125 years old sikh guru seva and i mean hathi seva not just hathi seva not just doing building not just doing digging and cleaning and feeding and growing the langar but teaching as i said all these things to guru hargobi sahib ji maharaj ji being the gatekeeper for the guru always keeping an eye on what's going on what seva need to do and when shame paacha baba bidhi chand ji apai gurdas ji went to see guru baba buddha ji 
at their place they sat down and there's an amazing painting which you can find where Baba Buddha is sitting on their manja and the Sikhs are on the sides and what does Guru Hargobi Sahaja Maharaj go and do? The first thing they do is go and grab Baba Buddha's feet. They grab Baba Buddha's feet and you can see this painting holding Baba Buddha's feet. And they said to Baba Buddha Ji, they go, Baba Ji, you met Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. You lived with them. You did seva of Pele Pacha, Duje Pacha, Tije Pacha, Chote Pacha. You did seva of my Guru, Pandime Pacha. You learned Sikhi from them. You learned how to love Guru from them. Teach me. Teach me how to Kama Sikhi. This is the sixth Guru holding the feet of Baba Buddha Ji saying, Teach me how to Kama my Sikhi, how to earn my Sikhi. And Baba Buddha Ji turns it around. He says, Maharaj, Maaf Guru. And he grabbed Sheme Pacha's feet. He grabbed the sixth Guru's feet and he said, I grabbed these same feet when I was 12 years old. And I'm holding on to them now that I'm 125. In all these years, after all these years, I want one thing from you. You know, Bakshade. Forgive me. Bless me. I've been holding on to these feet for 113 years. The only thing I want from you, I can't teach you anything. All I want from you is forgiveness. Bless me. Look at the pyar between a Guru and a Gursik. The Guru is saying to the Gursik, teach me how to come on my Sikhi. And that Gursik who's been doing Seva with that Guru for 113 years, who did the Tilaka Seva, the Gurgaddi Seva of five Gurus, did all that Seva we talked about. After 113 years of Seva, turns around to the Guru and says, forgive me. Look at the humility in that Gursik. And again, keeping an eye on the clock, it was the final night. So the Gursik sat, Baba Buddha Ji sat down, Shema Pacha sat. In the morning, they did it on. And it was said that the final moment was Baba Buddha Ji sat down with Shema Pacha, Guru Hargobi Savaji Maharaj in front of them face to face. And face to face, Baba Buddha Ji, Baba Buddha Ji, Baba Buddha Ji did Japji Sadha part. And as they did Japji Sadha part, they finished the Bani with their head at the feet of the sixth Guru. And with that final Mata take, they left their physical body. They left their physical body with their head at the feet of the sixth Guru, Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji Maharaj. 113 years of Seva. And what happens next? Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji Maharaj turns around to this Guru Sikhs that are there, Baba Bidhi Chand, Pai Gurdas Ji and others. He goes, Guru Mukha Badaiya. He goes, Vadaiya, Guru Mukha. No. And they were saying, why are you saying Vadaiya? He goes, Fateh Hogi. Guru Sikh Di Fateh Hoiya. This Guru Sikh has won. This Guru Sikh came onto this earth and he's gained victory. He came to do what he did and he's victorious. We're here to join with Maharaj. We're here to become one with Vahiguru. He goes, Sarenu Vadaiya, that this Guru Sikh has done it. Lakh Lakh Vadaiya. Look at the uniqueness of the Guru's house. And from then, when it came to do the final rites of Baba Buddha Ji's body, Guru Hargobi Sahib Maharaj themselves did the Shanan themselves put the clothes on Baba Buddha Ji. And Guru Asamrat, Guru will have all skills, Guru have all control. But again, this is the same Sikh Guru, as I said, who as a child grew up in the hands of Baba Buddha Ji. His father, pretty much the same. He knew that everything that he had, the Gyan he had, came from this Guru Sikh. And here he is dressing him, bathing him for his final rites. And perhaps one of the most moving things in this whole story is right at the end. In India, as you'll have seen, when it comes to when, when someone dies, they put the body in a manja or a palki and they carry it on the, on the shoulders to the, to the funeral house. Here, the body goes in a car, but there they carry it on the shoulder and it's normally the sons or the brothers of the deceased. Or if it's a bibi again, it's a son or a husband or a mamme. When it came to Baba Buddha Ji, Shema Pacha said to the Guru Sikhs, my turn. Shemi Pacha not only did the Shinan and the dressing, they actually picked up the body of Baba Buddha Ji on the shoulder. And it said that shedding tears of happiness, tears of joy, tears of love, Shemi Pacha said, he never let me carry him in his life while he's living. At least let me carry him now. This is Shemi Pacha's avatars. All I wanted was to carry him, do his seva. He never let me do his seva while he was alive. Now that he's gone, I'm doing his seva. 
and Shema Pasha took their body and did the final saskar. So when we talk about our relationship that we have with Maharaj, we talk about role models and what can Sikhi give us and how can Maharaj have a relationship with us. Here's how you have a relationship with Maharaj. Baba Buddha Ji is the best role model we have. Baba Buddha Ji, as 12 years old, was talking about teaching me about God because death is around the corner. Teach me about God. And from then to Guru Hargobind Sahib Maharaj, they never said once no. Whatever Guru said, Sat Bachan. We say Hukam Nama. Hukam Nama is a Hukam, it's a command. It's not a debate Nama. It's not a Sojke Nama. It's not a Jai Lagya Nama. It's a Hukam Nama. Jo Guru da Hukam yao Hukam hunda. It's not for us to debate kariye na, kariye shayat, idda hoga, udda hoga, no. Whatever Guru Sahib said, Baba Buddha Ji said, Sat Bachan, they went and did. Whatever Seva was needed, they did Sat Bachan and did it at the forefront every time. And when anyone ever praised them, they said, no, I'm just an Imana Guru Sikh, I'm nothing. I'm nothing. Yet, yeah, five Guru Sahibs, they did the Gurkhati Seva. Five Guru Sahibs, when they become Guru, it was Baba Buddha Ji, the first, first Sikh after the Guru themselves, the Mata take them and recognize them as the Guru. It's the greatness of Baba Buddha Ji. And it's why we are celebrating their life today. We should have done this years ago as youngsters in this country. We haven't. Baba Buddha Ji's life is long. There's so much many, so many more Sakya that Guru Sikhs can tell you. And I think it's on us to learn about them. 125 years, 113 of those spent in the seva of the Guru. We may not get that long. We may get 60, 70, 5, 2, 1. We may have a day. We want to build this relationship with Maharaj. Let's take Baba Buddha Ji to be that example. If Baba Buddha Ji started off with saying death could be around the corner, death can be around the corner. Death is an eye blink away. One blink of the eyelid away. And with that mentality, Baba Buddha Ji served six gurus. So, that was the life of Baba Buddha Ji. Benti is... With Maharaj, we need to build our relationship with Maharaj. The Kerpa will come from Guru Sahib. We can do all the Pralaya we want. We can try and push whatever we want to do and we should. We should do as much Seva as we as much Nitharim as we can. But the blessings will come from Guru Sahib when they're happy with us. And if we do all that stuff, but inside we're still full of hankar, we do all that stuff, but we're only doing it so other people watch us, other people see us, other people say, he's a great Guru Sikh, look how much Seva he does. That Kushi may not come. Because that humility, that Ja, the real desire for seva just because it's seva so thank you for listening again vadanya to everyone on the pella prakash of guru granth sahib maharaj and vadanya to everyone again that we, the panth is being blessed by guru six like baba buddha ji and i guess just to finish off with zo kavi santok singh writes that at the time of guru amar das ji maharaj actually said those who say the name of baba buddha ji even their papa mitad even by saying the name of a Guru Sikh of Baba Buddha Ji, who is so one with the Guru, so one with Wahi Guru, even then your Papa Mitad, it's the greatness and the heights of Baba Buddha Ji, the Guru Sikh of Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. So if I said anything wrong, please do forgive me. Bol de hoa anek prakar te galti ho gaye honji. Aap jini anjaan bache sanj ke maaf kar lena. Wahi Guru Ji ka khalsa, Wahi Guru Ji ki fateh.